Imagine spending seven decades dedicated to your craft, experimenting with materials and new ways of making. Imagine learning as a teenager that you wanted to be an artist, and then work tirelessly until your death at 93 years old, perfecting your technique. Ed Clark didn't invent abstraction, but he was determined to find his own voice. He was a great painter with an interesting life. So let's talk about it. Art lovers, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christopher West, and this is the place where we talk about all things modern and contemporary art and design. And I've strayed a bit recently, covering the Damien Hirst controversy and Kim Kardashian getting sued by an artist's foundation. So I felt like it was time to get back to some good old painting with one of my favorite artists, Ed Clark. Clark wasn't always an abstract painter. In fact, he won a gold star in an elementary school for drawing the best tree. But after two years of serving in the Air Force during World War II, he went back to Chicago and with the help of the GI Bill, enrolled at the Art Institute of Chicago. But it wouldn't take him long to realize that being a black painter in the United States during the late 40s and early 50s presented some, well, challenges. So in 1952, he left the segregated US for more welcoming pastures and headed to Paris. For Clark, Paris represented a space of social and artistic freedom that was unattainable in the United States. He said of Paris that it was the freest of the cities and a true magnet for artists. We could meet among artists of all countries with no distinction of class, race, or political ideology. We were artists, nothing else. He was particularly influenced by the work of Nicolas de Staal, the Russian-born French abstract painter known for his bold colors in densely packed forms. Clark's circle of friends in Paris included the writer James Baldwin and other American expat artists like Beaufort Delaney, Joan Mitchell, Sam Francis, and Herb Gentry. And it was here where he fully embraced abstraction and started painting on a monumental scale. Not satisfied with the traditional paintbrushes and tools that were typically used by painters, he created what has come to be known as the push broom technique. He would perform what he called the big sweep that would create the bold, broad strokes he was hoping for. And this led to some success in Paris, and he would participate in important exhibitions and show at important galleries. But eventually he returned to the United States and settled in New York City. And it was here where he began to work with shaped canvases, first out of necessity and then by design. He started working on paper because it was less expensive than canvas. When he returned to canvas, he added the paper to the surface and they would often spill over the edges. So Clark would build an armature to support the paper. The final result was not just a painting, but a collage and sculpture as well. Throughout his life, Clark continued to travel, taking inspiration from the colors he would experience during his journeys. He started creating tubular forms that didn't adhere to the strong horizontal nature of his earlier work. And Clark continued to exhibit both in New York and in Paris, and he was often considered an artist's artist, one that was admired by his peers, but still not widely well known. And this would change after a 2013 solo exhibition at the Art Institute of Chicago, after which he would rightfully be recognized as a leading figure in the second generation of abstract expressionists. He participated in many other exhibitions at some of the most important museums in the world, and his work is now in the permanent collections of places like MoMA, the Met, the Smithsonian, and countless others. And in 2019, shortly before his death, he would come to be represented by the mega gallery Hauser & Wirth. And as you can imagine, the market for his work has continued to grow. So you might be asking, what's it take to get an example of his work in my own home? Well, the major paintings will certainly cost you, especially the early ones. This one from the late 60s at Sotheby's brought over a million dollars and strong work from the later periods can still run well into six figures like this one at Christie's. 
he did make a few prints that give you the feel of Clark for a lot less. But the sweet spot might be his works on paper. These give you some of the gesture and texture you see in the large paintings, but for a fraction of the price. They can run from the high five figures to the low six figures. And if you're interested, I currently happen to have one for sale. So don't hesitate to reach out, either via the comments or my website listed below in the description. Remember, everyone who makes it to the end is a complete rock star. And if you like 20th century painting, I've created a playlist and I'll link that right here. Make sure you're subscribed for more and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao.